go through the basic principles of meditation technique, posture, breath, anything else you okay, can add. Okay, so here are the most important things. First, take the time to do it. <laughs> Which is what is the big stumbling block for most yeah, people. Yeah, take the time to do okay. it. Say, I commit 10 minutes. That's hardly any time, right? Exactly. Uh, so I commit 10 minutes. So commit the time. Secondly, it's best not to do meditation when you're extremely tired because you'll fall asleep. And that's not the purpose of meditation. If you fall asleep in meditation, it means you need more sleep. So mm -hmm. you first fix that. Mm -hmm. okay. Third, uh, try not to do a meditation on a full stomach because your attention will always go here and the rumble and you know right. the slight discomfort and the fatigue that happens after people eat. Thirdly, be comfortable. So a lot of people think, oh, I have to be in full lotus or half lotus because they've seen pictures of people right. with, uh, in a certain posture with a certain mudra in their hands. And that's absolutely not necessary. The most important thing is to be comfortable and to be seated, whether you're seated on the floor or a chair doesn't matter. But on a chair for beginners is better because you have the backrest. And you can't uh, cross your legs, and right? And you shouldn't, shouldn't cross your right. legs. I've you learned shouldn't. that from you. Yeah, so <laughs> don't cross your legs. Have a, a backrest. And some people So you do want have it. a backrest so you're comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. And if you sit down on the floor, the, these days you have all these backrests available for the floor as well. But why not sit on a chair if you're used to it? Yes, uncross your legs. Keep your hands open. Don't make a fist because that's a sign of, again, stress. stress. Okay. Right? So hands open, restful. And then you can just close your eyes. <clears throat> Do nothing for a while. Now, if you want to go the next step, you can just observe your breath. Again, you don't manipulate your breath, you just observe it as it comes in and it goes out. Because most people don't breathe, right, when they're stressed. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they breathe erratically, right. they breathe fast, <clears throat> they breathe shallow. So just observe your breath. Now, that's the second step. You, and you can just stay with that for as long as you want. The third step could be that you kind of regulate in a way or help the breath regulate itself through a mantra, which could be so hum. So on the in, intake, you say so. so on the out breath, you say hum. Or if you don't like Sanskrit, you can say I am. I on the inhale, am on the exhale. And you said one time, if you were Christian or something, you could say a Christian mantra, which was amen, right? Amen. But right. You, again, you'd regulate, allow the, With breath. the breath. So I is on the intake. Ah, and then men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can do that, Aham, Yahweh, etc. Yahweh is a good yeah. one too. Yahweh. Yeah. Didn't think so about. you can do that, and then that's the second. You'll find that if you add a mantra, it actually allows the breath to self-regulate itself. Now you can add on things. You can count to four on the inhale, pause to one, two, and then exhale to four. And then there are very many advanced meditation techniques just based on breath, over 108 of them, wow. are just based on breath. And you know some energize the body, some quieten the body. So this is all comes under uh, meditation that has to do with breathing techniques. You want to go further, you can be aware of your body. It's a form of vipassana. So first you can put your attention in different parts of the body, your forehead and just keep it there, or your shoulders, or your navel, or your nose, or your knees, or your ankles, or your toes. Uh, or you can rotate that, and that's a form of meditation that comes under the broader heading of yoga nidra. You can mm -hmm. also do meditations that put your awareness in the inside of your body. So you can put your attention and feel your heartbeat. And with a little practice, you'll be able to we've feel. We've done that before. Yeah, we've yeah, done no, that. You feel your yeah. heartbeat or the movement of your lungs. Or you can put your attention in the viscera, in the abdomen. Feel, you know, the intestines, lungs, 
Um, this is like a PhD, abdomen, and this is incredible. Spleen, liver, yeah. etc. These are all under the heading of body awareness. Then there's awareness of mental space, awareness of thoughts. So, you know, you just observe your thoughts as they come in and they leave. Or you can evoke, if you want, emotions like love or compassion or joy or peace. So would you think about that or you just... No, what you would do is, uh, let's say you want to evoke the emotion of love, you just think of someone for a split second that you love. And then... And then allow the emotion to well up and then observe it. Okay. Wow. So you can do that with any feeling, any image. You can think of the image of someone you care about. Or if you want to evoke compassion, think of someone that you would like to help uh, who's not fortunate, is suffering. Just think of them, a child, a hungry child, and then let it go and then see what wells up and then observe it. So what are these are called insight meditations. They're in Sanskrit called vipassana. Mental space, images, feelings, sensations, thoughts. Mm -hmm. You can go beyond that. You can do meditations on relationships, or relationship with your significant other, with your children, with your siblings, with um, your friends, with uh, your community, with your society, with um, the planet with the solar system, with the galaxy, with the universe. So it's infinite. So yeah, you expand because you are a web of relationships. There's no you without a relationship. So there's me, there's you, there's we, and there's us. And us includes the whole universe. Okay, so as we expand our awareness, our sense of self also expands. We realize that Deepak Chopra is a temporary um, impermanent, transient, ephemeral flicker in eternity. This is not me. That's just uh, another bundle of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts. Uh, who's behind that? Who's my true self? It all comes spontaneously. So when people start meditation, first they just feel less stress. Second, then they start noticing that they have more intuition because they're getting to know themselves and they're going to getting to know the context in which they exist. So there's more intuition. And then third, there's more creativity because creativity is based on intuition and allowing things to be uncertain. See, our, our, our conditioned mind wants everything to be certain, but in certainty, there's no creativity. Anything that's fixed has no creativity. Right. When you have chaos, randomness, non-linearity, an open system, and allow things to happen by themselves, there's the emergence of creativity. And you soon discover that's not only your creativity, but the creativity of the universe. Every aspect of the universe that is constantly emerging. So start with stress management. You get better sleep, you have more energy. But then there are benefits like um, lowering of blood pressure, reduced inflammation in the body. We now have shown that it affects how your genes operate, mm -hmm. which is the intelligence inside every cell, how the brain changes. These are all the benefits. But the bigger benefits are higher consciousness, not only insight and intuition and creativity, but tapping into uh, your higher self. So there are stages of development, soul consciousness, cosmic consciousness, divine consciousness. We're not using the word God because right. it means different things, but Did sacred it. consciousness. And ultimately, what they call unity consciousness, where you feel that you are totally one with all that exists. So it's a process, but it's a wonderful process. It's a great process. Mm -hmm. That was. Thank you for explaining that to us. That's amazing. Wow.